right, everyone? Thank you so much for joining today. We will be basically walking through the unlocking the potential of the contingent workforce uh, with human tech led. So it's a pleasure being in here with everyone. So my name is João Martires and I am the CEO of Uno Juno. Just as a brief introduction, uh, Uno Juno has more than one decade of experience working with contingent workforce programs. We have built uh, appropriate technology where we support companies uh, to manage, pay, onboard, globally classify uh, contingent workforce uh, programs. And uh, in addition to that, we also have uh, a talent marketplace uh, where companies can access 100,000 plus talent pools within the creative and tech industry. So we have supported like thousands of clients today. And uh, for example, uh, we have brought in here just uh, very like three quick case studies just to understand where we have the most impact. So for example, Avas has leveraged like contingent workforce programs as part of their competitive advantage. Uh, and they do, do tap into that pool uh, to have access to a diverse pool of talent. They had a very big challenge that it was managing a fragmented uh, hiring and onboarding process. And with Unijuno, we provided an all-in-one tech solution led by humans that uh, from end to end support sourcing, onboarding, managing and paying freelancers. This had a massive impact with the Avas in terms of diversity of talent and also it ultimately it resulted in like around 25,000 pounds of savings per month. If we look at Gusto, uh, a, a meal uh, tech uh, company subscription based model, uh, they wanted like to tap into global hiring to expand their talent pool and the Unijuno supported them to give access to 150 plus markets by providing like a global classification tech solution uh, to allow them to hire internationally. And then PepsiCo, uh, as everyone in here might have uh, like this challenge, it was a short, uh, it was shortfall of talent. So with PepsiCo, we actually provided access to our talent pool and they were able to tap into like uh, 100,000 plus creative and tech disciplines to support uh, their, their needs. While decreasing the time to hire by 75% and uh, achieving fulfillment rates within 24 hours of 90%. So this is like overall in a picture what we do in terms of like supporting clients. Now today we are going to look at two things. So current HR leaders challenges and future trends uh, of um, challenges or upcoming uh, trends. So in terms of the current challenges, when we are talking with uh, hiring managers, HR leaders, TA teams, we kind of uh, are seeing uh, three big parts coming in. So one, it's like uh, technology challenges. Then the second one, it's going to be around performance. And then the other one, it's around like processes. So for example, on technology challenges, we like see like uh, how do we leverage AI and process automation? How do we bring insights uh, into our planning and contingent workforce programs and employee, um, and employee planning? Then on the performance side, we see like uh, an ever demanding increase of talent needs where like time to wire must decrease and operational costs are also, also under pressure. So how do we do more with less budgets? And then on terms of the process, you can see in here like uh, a lot of things like uh, how do we integrate different systems? Uh, how do we like bring different processes together? So this is like also a continuous challenge. So, interestingly, like uh, Gartner published uh, the 2024 vision and 83% um, of the HR leaders face challenges like uh, securing ta talent with uh, the necessary skills and uh, basically 57% acknowledge that the skills are directly impacting their, comp their, ca their, um, their capacity to maintain corporate performance. So this is not surprising because like um, uh, the skill sets and the, the human capital are the core foundation of the organizations 
and um, if we are not able to remain competitive like uh, there's going to be ultimately a big impact on the competitive advantage of companies and then 76% of uh, uh, HR leaders say that they are like overwhelmed uh, with the growth of their job responsibilities now using as an example a contingent workforce management process I can see and uh, everyone probably can relate that it's quite complex and it's quite uh, actually demanding to keep up with uh, the requirements to run efficiency processes within the organization so this is just one of the parts of uh, that HR teams will face and we can see like nine top level topics that goes from sourcing uh, global worker onboarding, classification, approval, supplier management, reporting, insights, and this is just one process. So if uh, HR teams and uh, TA teams are not like leveraging technology and like supporting solutions like Unijuno that provide an end-to-end solution, uh, this is not going to simplify in the future. So like uh, that's why technology is important uh, to like uh, to optimize and to bring value to the organizations. Now, looking at more where we are going in terms of the future, we start to see some emerging trends. So, top of mind for everyone in the, in the news, it's like uh, in how to integrate generative AI and automation into the processes. So, when we look uh, at a Gartner report. 76% of the HR leaders are saying that organizational success will be a must uh, for, for organizations that are implementing generative AI. So this means that like uh, people that don't tackle this and that don't evaluate use cases of generative AI and like uh, bring that alignment into the organizational goals will start to fall behind other organizations. Then the other two trends that we are seeing and we hear this like from uh, HR leaders and contractors is that there's a big movement to skills-based hiring away from role-based hiring and then that uh, companies these days are leveraging more and more workforce, uh, flexible workforce uh, teams so that they can also respond to economic conditions. So, uh, staffing industry analyst has provided like a survey where we already see that companies are adjusting to this. So, 65% of the companies they b believe that they will increase user usage and reliance on contingent workforce in the next two years, and 80% of global firms are now using contractors. So. This is a big shift and it will also require adjustment and planning from HR and the TA teams to make sure that they can strategically understand what are the organizational needs and how to flex up and down talent needs in the future. So if we, if we zoom in, if we zoom in in how to integrate generative AI and automation. So we all talk about generative AI and there's a, a lot of like uh, buzzwords and going uh, around like uh, and what actually does this mean so our advice as a technology company is that uh, use cases and organizational alignment must be evaluated and with any adoption of new technology you should really understand how you face it and what are you trying to solve for so you will only be successful as an organization if you have a clear understanding and uh, then when you implement that uh, people understand what's going to be the impact and that you get the buy-in from the teams and the stakeholders uh, on how generative AI and automation is used. Now, there are massive benefits that we see uh, with generative AI. So we kind of like brought in and I will walk you through the three ones that I believe that are the most impactful. So generative AI if used to amplify and augment the human capability, meaning that it's not going to be about replacing jobs, it's going to be actually about like understanding what are the tasks that are rep repetitive 
that can be automated and that can be optimized so that humans can actually focus on innovation and creativity. So ultimately, this will basically impact the job satisfaction and will also, as HR leaders and as organizational leaders, you will actually get more value from your workforce, whether it's permanent or contingent, uh, and um, you will actually increase the value generated um, within the organization. Then the second area that we see a big use case for generative AI, it's around collaboration and communication. So for example, HR leaders and the talent acquisition leaders, they can actually spend more time building relationships with candidates, spending more time with the employees, with the contractors, building for value, rather than actually be screening and like uh, taking a lot of uh, administrative tasks. So we believe that this is going to be unlocking a lot of value when it comes of effective communications and the relationship building within the organization. And then the final one where we see uh, an interesting impact is acceleration of decision making by making predictive, predictive capabilities more accessible to the common user. So these days we, we, we already have like a lot of predictive capabilities, but the skill set required to access this normally requires a level above average of quantitative and modeling skills. Generative AI is bringing a new skill that's prompting. So with the right prompts and with the right tools and with the right language models, it becomes easier access to anyone in the organization to actually get predictive insights by leveraging the technology. Then, also related and amplified by the AI movement, uh, skills-based hiring will even be more important in the future. So, earlier on I touched that AI will not replace jobs. Now, our view and what we see in the market is that that doesn't mean that AI is not going to change jobs. So skill-based hiring and uh, for HR leaders having this kind of planning, it's going to be quite important because if you look at jobs and you break them down to skills, you will be easier to identify what are the skills that are likely to be automated in the future and what are the skills that are the most important and value generation for the organization. And then, by doing this, you can actually plan ahead what are going to be the future organizational needs in a fast-moving environment and uh, in, an, in a landscape that will evolve very fast. So, for example, today, when we talk about the internet, we talk about what we can do in the internet. And if we, look up, if we think about uh, 1990, when internet came, people were talking about oh, like, uh, internet, what is going to happen. And today is the norm. Some jobs disappeared, many more were created. In the future, we need to be prepared that AI is going to become one of the supporting tools. And a bit like internet, it will evolve on how actually we use it. So skills-based hiring, it's going to be critical in the upcoming shift on how we plan for our organizations. Now, in terms of the main key takeaways, like the first one uh, is that hiring is a challenge, whether it's jobs or skills. Now, when if we identify and we break down organizations by skills, it makes it easier. Because instead of looking for a job and we are tied for, for a role, we actually know exactly what we are hiring for and uh, then might be that actually you don't even know, need to go externally. It might be that uh, by having a good understanding of the skill sets that exist in your organization, you can actually fulfill that internally without uh, requiring to go and hire a new role. So there are benefits in terms of like internal mobility and there are benefits also of optimizing uh, like organizations in terms of like recruitment process. Then we also see like other core benefits. So with internal mobility comes expansion of talent pools internally and career passes. Then from a project outcome, if you understand what are the skills, you will match 
the best talent and the skill sets required with the project outcome that you want to achieve. There's a benefit in terms of diversity because we can actually, if properly and ethically implemented, we can actually increase diversity by reducing human bias. And then ultimately, like there's going to be an impact in worker satisfaction because like uh, if people have like ambition levels to move to have like more diverse roles and to have exposure to different areas of the organization like the skill set organization based will enable those movements and then like uh, the, f the, the final movement that we see it's also the increased need for contingent workforce management programs because ultimately contractors, freelancers, and even alumni, they can actually like help to like uh, fulfill this talent supply gaps, whether if it's like for short term skill set needs or for very specific skill set needs to deliver value to your organization. Uh, I would recommend uh, like uh, the audience, like if you are interested in this, IBM, Unilever, and Microsoft, they do have massive investment programs already rolling over to tackle this and uh, I think they are like uh, very good uh, companies that are doing this at the global level and that are leading from the front. Then the final piece that uh, comes nicely it's like uh, leveraging resp resp flexible and responsive workforces so in here like uh, it's quite important if we think about our economic environment, if we think about like uh, the market dynamics, the technology advancements, like uh, achieving a level where part of your organization uh, it's fulfilled by contingent workforce programs, it's actually a competitive advantage. Why is that? So when we when we look at uh, ai trends skill based organizations you can already see how like contingent workforces and contractors marry up very well together because freelancers and contractors historically have been the segment of the workforce that has been the most flexible adaptable and uh, responsive for outcomes and uh, they can like continue to help organizations particularly in a fast moving environment uh, to deliver a competitive advantage uh, at the core level. And uh, from an HR leaders and talent acquisition leaders perspective, having a strategic approach to talent that includes like flexible workers, it's great because like uh, it will create room uh, for targeting certain skill sets that can actually impact the organization but you, and you might not need them in the future. So I think like uh, having a strategic approach to identify what are the core skill sets that you want to retain and to have in your permanent headcount and what are the skill sets that you need to ramp down and up flexibly to align to your like organizational outcomes, it makes you a strategic partner at the top of the organization. So this is very, very important. And then, finally, a healthy mix of flexible workers, it's actually a way of de-risking the organization in the future. So, and this can go in terms of like upside, in terms of like high growth economic environment, or if there's a slowdown on the economy, having this LC mix will help like uh, achieve sustainability and like I grow from an organizational point of view. So I think like um, to, to sum up, all of these trends are at the core of HR and technology leaders. Uh, and um, basically like uh, it gives a great opportunity to HR and the talent acquisition leaders to make a massive impact in the organizations that are to come. Because like, uh, you have the opportunity uh, to build new playbooks, to reshape processes, and actually to make an impact uh, at the strategic level of any organization. So change is daunting, but uh, at the same time, it's a very exciting time because with the right technology, and always like, having in mind that we are dealing with humans, 
you can actually make an impact and you are in control. So to wrap up, just uh, we, um, we kind of also wanted to um, give uh, some insights. We produce at Unijuno like uh, one of our flagship reports that's like the benchmarking writings. So everyone has a thought back with one of the right reports inside. And um, this, is, this is like uh, quite uh, helpful if you want to have some insights on uh, what are the, the, the rights across like uh, the creative and tech industry in terms of contingent workforce and freelancers. <laughs>